Gate lady. Door lady. There should be a couple of loads of lime here. Just the one so far. That's fine. There's another two coming today, Saturday today, another on Monday, and then there's another six loads after that at some point. This dug is about to meet Baxter, and Baxter is about to meet this dug for the first time. Come on in. Clover. Put him in at the deep end. There's the number plate you're needing. Landy. Right, I'm in the hens at the moment. So this is the egg belt. So these are boxes down here that hens all lay into. And this belt moves in that direction on the top here, draws the eggs to the other end of the shed where they're graded. And what's happened, I fixed it now, but when this was rotating round, it folded over itself all the way around that roller. So the eggs couldn't get down through the boxes past that lip. So we've sorted that. We just need to sort out all the eggs that are stuck in these boxes, get them back onto the belt. That's been a pain, this. It's pretty old and tired, this shed. It's needing updated. The issue now, all the eggs under the belt. Every single box, all the way down there. Lovely. We got that sorted. It's never gonna be right. We'll probably need to replace the belt on that hen shed when they next get swapped over, which is March time. The two hen sheds we've got, they both hold 2,300 birds. They have been in for about 18 years. They're old, they're tired, they are needing replaced. But because we're such a small producer for four and a half thousand hens, off the shelf sheds don't really exist at that size. You're kind of looking at minimum 16,000 and even then I think they're tricky to get nowadays. You're talking more 32,000 bird minimums for off-the-shelf sheds. Next stop, Agricart. I'm hoping they've got one of these kicking about. Just a roller off of a trolley, but they do a lot of potato kits, so I'm hoping we'll get a roller similar size-wise. We've got something similar, same diameter, but um, different width, different bolt hole size. Might need to do a wee bit of fudging to make this work, but we'll give it a try anyway. There's a low loader. We're needing one of them. Do one of those dovetails that lifts up at the back though to make it a flatbed so we can do bales with it. Save us buying two trailers. We need to do a wee bit of jiggery pokery and cut this in half. Happy days. Kev's gonna go nip off to a dealership and bring back a machine, a new machine, a shiny machine. What's it gonna be? What do you think? You'll see it in about 60 seconds. I'll see it in about two hours, real time. Right, I'm at yard two now. Should be a bucket behind this door. Yep, there we go. I'll fill up the feeders with that feed first before I take the bucket away, just so we don't need to rush back with the bucket tomorrow morning. Whack that on there. Normally we've got two buckets at yard one. One's a big drain bucket, which we try and keep clean. Don't try and put stone in it and make a mess of it. So it's there, but the other bucket, which is a bit of a second bucket that gets used for anything and everything, used and abused, it's a yard four for pushing up lime at the moment. So I've come here to yard two, where there's a separate bucket, which is another one, which is a bit of a scrappy bucket and can get used for anything and everything. Right, we're back. These coos are all needing bedding. She's a big barrel, isn't she? Oh, jeez, look what you've landed in. Lovely. Ooh, Kev's back. Can't see what he's got yet. I'll finish rolling out these bales and then we'll see what machine we've got in the back. It's behind those boxes. You can see a wee bit of blue. Right, job done. Let's go and see what Kev's got in the back of his tractor. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Kev. Kev washed his tractor yesterday, so nice and shiny. Ooh. Ooh. 
here we are, a big blue plow. It's a Lemkin Jewel 8, it's the one we had on demo. So ex-demo, we just bought that one. The boards, they were wanting to go and try and shine them up, but we gave up waiting, we just decided we'll go and pick it up. So they need a wee bit shined up. We're gonna whack the plow onto this just to see, make sure it lifts it. Just figuring out all how to use it again. I was away when we had this on demo, so Kev in theory knows how to work it. I don't. It's just been sorting out the wheel mechanism. There's basically put it into transport, pin down there, take that out, pin here, take that out. This slot moves 90 degrees and that hole lines up through that shaft and then that's it ready for transport. Fairly simple operation. So this is an on-land or in-furrow plow. So basically this hydraulic ram pushes the whole thing away from the tractor. So the tractor will sit on the land and then if it gets too wet, which generally probably wouldn't be plowing then, you shift it back to in furrow because you get more grip. We'll just get the stone grape off. That's why we're building a new stone grape because this is a heavier plow than our previous one. Well, we've still got a previous one and our one before, which is for sale. It was in transport mode, the plow, so we didn't need a bigger stone grape to move it. That'd be some laugh, buy a plow, try to can't lift it. Maybe for the moment of truth, will it lift it? No bother. Slight on the front anyway. Kev's gonna bounce it up and down. Oh, it's just about coming off at the front there. It's almost coming up at the front. We're managing. We're managing. Any form of quick change in direction or speed up, slow down, acceleration, and you'd be doing for these. Right, we're finally getting to the job that we were wanting to do first thing this morning, which was fill in some potholes in the car park some more potholes in the car park. Get some planings. They've kind of lost their stickiness. They're not that good, these planings, but it's all we've got right now. With the plows, it came down to, well, we demoed three options, KV, Kuhn, and Lemkin. Kuhn was far too heavy. The New Holland could hardly even lift it. So that was a straight no. Then KV versus Lemkin. And I'll tell you what happened. So we had kind of decided we were gonna pick the KV. We'd had the quotes. So I went back to the dealer, I said, we're interested in that machine. And obviously tried a bit of bar string, said, look, what can you do with the price? Can you shift it anywhere? Can you do anything for us? And this was on a Friday. He phoned back on Monday, Monday, said the two machines they had were both sold. The next stock that was coming in was an extra 2,000 pounds. And that extra 2,000 pounds just put it over the edge. It was too much. The difference between the Glemkin and the KV, there was a, a big chunk. Right, potholes. These wee ones are all right. We're not desperate to get them done, but there's a big couple in here we need to get filled. First bit sorted out there and up on that shelf there. This bend that comes into the car park, it's too tight. Coming off the main road, you have to be kind of at 90 degrees for a certain length. Um, I presume for lorries or access, basically getting things off of the main road safely. So planning wise, we had to do this, but it's meant this is a wee bit of a gooseneck there and it's tight and it screws up the ground in there. That's possibly a bit that corner that we should tar. Tires 
flipping expensive. They look a wee bit sightly, but give it a few days, they'll bed in. It's to be dry for the next few days as well, so hopefully, well, with the rain, it kind of flushes them out, so hopefully they'll bed in nicely. Ooh, shiny toy! Banger, though. Right, we're back at the stone grip here and the collets, I need to weld them in place. So what we're going to do is going to lift this box 10 mil um, because these are oversized that width by 20 mil. So shim it with something 10 mil and then we can weld them all or tack them all in place and then that'll overhang 10 mil this side, 10 mil that side and it'll be even for welding all the way around the seams. Right, we'll find some bits of metal. These are all 10 mil. I've just shimmed underneath. I'll do that all the way along. Gonna clean up your looks with all the lies in the books to make us. They're equally offset, so 10 mil this way, 10 mil that way. So there's a lovely wee seam in there to weld either side, all the way along there. Put all the tines in just to see what kind of, make sure everything was relatively square and set. There's a couple that are pointing down a wee bit or up a wee bit, but it's not the collets, it's just the tines. So if you rotate them a wee bit, they'll come up. So that's no problem. These are the uprights that are going to go in there with collet, collet, tine, tine. So that's going to make your U shape with tines. But that's another wee little bit of it done. I've not really spent too much time on this yet. Right, we're off to push up some lime. I've nipped along here to yard four. This pile of lime is why I'm here. That'll do, push the lime up a bit. So we got our soil sampled for um, acidity levels. What lime does is it brings up the pH of the soil. Generally speaking, don't do that to fields that have potatoes going into them because the potato guys like the ground quite acidic. So generally after there's been potatoes, that's when we get lime in. So there's three loads sitting there of lime. It's really dense, heavy stuff. About 60 tonnes sitting there. And there's another seven loads to come. 210 tonne to come more of lime. And then that'll be everything covered for lime-wise this year. In theory, you also get better worm numbers in your soil. We like worm in the soils because um, they create pathways in the soil uh, to channel water. So good for drainage, good for reducing compaction. They break down biological matter that you want broken down for the nutrition to go through the crops again anyway that's why we want more worms and bringing up your ph helps your worms and there's a few other benefits to spreading lime but anyway that's a big pile of lime pushed up cheers for watching if you're not ready please subscribe See you tomorrow. And like the video. Like the video. Go on. Click like.